Jimmy. I shot him. Oh, man. I gotta call my dad. I gotta call my dad. Dad. I shot him. I got him, Dad. You got him. Well, he, uh, as soon as I got in the stand this morning, there was two big bugs. I could hear them. They were big, fighting way off in the distance, off to my right. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope that's not my drop time bug knocking some antlers off, you know. And it wasn't maybe 35 minutes later, right when it got daylight. I saw him walking down the edge of the woods, and he came right up to me right up to the about 40 yards right in front where this old buck rub is and then he didn't come straight to the pile he circled around and came right up the edge of which I was sitting in so it literally was like he was like 14 yards from me perfectly broadside shoulder forward I mean he was close like right there and I'm like oh crap so when I went to draw I drew back and he saw me he didn't even look up at me. He just took off running. Like, he, he knew something was weird. He saw the peripheral. And he ran out there way off to my right and stopped about 26, 27 yards. And I uh, I drew back, and he was quartering away hard. And I drew back, and I drilled him. But I hit him in the guts. But it was quartering away so far, I had to cut long and everything else. I mean, he was, like, darn near butt-facing me. So... I hit him kind of back, to be honest, I really did, but I think I, the way he took off, he about freaking plowed over right, right there. I mean, it was, I think it'll be good. Oh, he was quartered a lot. Well, yeah, because I didn't get a pass through, and if I just hit him in the guts, you know, that would have just went straight through, you know. Heavy, 10.1 grains per inch. They're 10.1 grains per inch. So they're they're two grains heavier than the ones you're, that I gave you per inch. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna give him all the time he needs. We'll come back this evening and look for him. Right. I got major penetration too. All but my knock was sticking out of him. I got major penetration too because all but my knock was sticking out of him. Well, I don't, I don't know. I couldn't see that far, but I know I buried it deep. And my broadheads are two inches cut in diameter. All right, I will. Thanks, Dad. Love you. Oh, yeah. All right, I will. See you, Dad. All right, guys, so we let him hang out there for about four hours, so we wasn't sure about the shot, so we're just kind of 
a little worried about it, so we're going to give him a, we gave him four hours, so we're going in after him. I got my good buddy Jimmy and Bobby here. They're going to be helping us out and tracking it, so wish us luck. Here we go. So when we started tracking this deer, you know, um, I didn't realize this at the time, but the GoPro was, uh, the audio is malfunctioning. But anyway, when we were tracking this deer right now, you guys have to understand, uh, we were finding good blood. It, it really was good blood. You know, it wasn't like it was bad, like gut blood or liver blood. It was bright blood and some of it was dry. You know, because we had waited four hours, but still some of it was nice and bright. We could find it. So as you can see, we were tracking it relatively easily. Um, and I was still discouraged, you know, because just for the simple reason, when we were tracking, you know, it was consistent, but we were starting to get out there to 80, 90 yards, and it wasn't opening up, which can be, oh, man, it's just... If you've been a hunter, man, you, if you've ever tracked a deer before, you know that feeling of uncertainty. And it was getting to that point. Out about 95 yards, you know, Bobby had said, oh my gosh, stop, I hear something. And we heard something take off. You know, there was some crashing, and we wasn't for sure what it was, but we kind of thought it could have been buzzards leaving a tree because it was a little bit windy that day. Not not a whole lot, but um, it was it was nerve wracking because right now I'm thinking that we just jumped up my big buck, and you know this is the deer of a lifetime, you know, and two double drop times, 15 points. You know, you just don't get two chances at deer like this. And I'm telling you right now, this is probably the most scared moment of of my life. And be tracking that deer and thinking it had ran off. So we just decided to keep going and keep tracking blood and uh, see where the blood trail led. I'll tell you what, with what you're seeing right now, this was probably one of the best feelings you can ever imagine, is seeing a pile of blood that big. And it was uh, a moment where I was also scared at the same time, you know, relieved, but I thought he had bedded down right there and then got up, you know, and then, you know, had left. But we were looking at the blood, and the blood looked really good, but you can't see this in the video, but there was blood pools that size, a bunch of them. You know, there was three or four different spots that big where he had literally dragged himself, you know, from one spot to another and rolled around and drug, him, drug himself. I mean, this was one tough buck, and we couldn't figure out where he'd left. You know, we, we couldn't, but just for a simple reason, you know, there was so much blood with no exit trail, we were just concerned, but you can see that. My God, there was a lot of blood. And there was three other piles the same size as that one. So we were getting real nervous right here. We thought maybe he was he got up and ran off, but at the same time with that much blood loss, you know he's got to be close. This right here was when we decided to split up and start looking for the exit trailer or the body. And you can see me walk down the edge. And that's when it happened, guys. I saw fur for the first time. And I saw just a patch, and it's about 60 yards down the ravine there. And I got Jimmy over here for him to see it. And he's like, yeah, it's fur, it's fur. And Bobby's like, oh my gosh, you better get ahead, you know. And 
and I honestly thought he could still be alive. I had no idea, so I'm I'm ready to draw back on him at any second. And the closer I get, you know, the the more I can see. And the patch of fur turns into a whole hindquarter and turns into a whole leg. And then I see his rack laying there. And oh my gosh, I was just so tickled to death. I knew he was dead. And the overwhelming emotions that came over me right then and there was unbelievable. The fact that I just killed the buck of my life. I I can't describe to you guys with words on the, the level of gratitude that I had for that moment right there from a blessing from God, from a blessing of great friends, my wife. You know, I'm hugging her right now. And, and Jimmy, I'm giving Jimmy a hug, you know, because he's the guy that made this all happen. And Bobby, he's a great guy too. And all, everybody had a factor in making this hunt come true. Yeah. Wow. Let's get a picture of him on the good side. Yeah, yeah. Get, get my good side. Yeah. Oh my God. Not the extra hole. Oh my God, look at that hole. Wow. I, love, I love him, Brock. Ordering away so far. He's paying attention to the rack. Wow. He's got some of that dried up stuff. Are you uh, recording this? Yeah. Man. Yeah. 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 He's stiff, too. He's been dead. Yeah, yeah he didn't. Yeah. Oh, no. You, I'd say if you were to come right down here, he'd be yeah. dead. That's yeah. a better That's a better angle. Oh my gosh, look at them drops. Look at <laughs> that. <laughs> oh look my that. God, guys, I got him. <laughs> Look it's been a lot one. of seasons, man. Hunting for me, I've never what killed a beautiful deer. Like deer. Ain't that beautiful, mm -hmm. man? That's still absolutely got some gorgeous. velvet on the tip here. Never got it off. Absolutely gorgeous, wow. hey, Bob. It's a dream come true, guys. Congratulations, Heck buddy. Yeah, Josh. It's a dream come true. Yeah, man. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Wow. Oh, do you want to? You got you got one, two, three, <clears throat> four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen <laughs> points. Fifteen <laughs> points. Man, look at him. That's a giant, really. Double That's drop. A big deer, yeah, boy. Right. He's a big deer. That's a freaking heck of a rock. Yeah. All right, guys. As you can see, man, this dream came true for me. He came in this morning, you know, and uh, it, it almost didn't work out, to be honest. But uh, it all did. As you can see, it's double drop. We named him Double D. So it's uh, we've been getting a lot of pictures of him. He hasn't broke daylight a whole lot, to be honest. And uh, this morning when I got in, I heard some bucks fighting, and I think it was one of him. So I'm just telling you guys right now how big of a blessing this is. And I just I can't thank you enough for watching, for one. But two, you know, thanking the man upstairs for giving me such a beautiful deer. So uh, we're gonna get him out of here. And, uh... We've been hunting this buck, this Double D. We call him Double D because he's got two drops. And uh, we're down here in Southern Ohio hunting. And uh, I'm telling you what, guys, this is a dream come true. I just, I just can't get over the fact that we got it done, man. We've had trail cam pick after trail cam pick of him, and he never broke daylight once. And the moon phases that have really changed on this last couple of days, and he broke daylight twice. And uh, the thing was, is the wind was blowing wrong for the spot. And, uh, but sure enough, man, the wind switched this morning. And it wasn't quite perfect, but we had our Ozonics. And I, I felt pretty confident with our, we had Under Armour scent lock. They had this new scent gear, man, that's, they use silver instead of, you know, coal and different things. It's fantastic. But long story short, man, is, is uh, the Ozonic paid off this morning for sure because it came in downwind and then circled around. And I got my shot on him and it, I hit him far back, but it was angled up so far. You know, I needed, I needed a heavy arrow and thank goodness I hunt with these deep sixes. As you can see here, this new style of arrow these deep six injections, these are 10.1 grains per inch. I hit him all the way back here and it went all the way up through his vitals. And I was even shooting a, uh, let me open this up here. These Rage Hypodermics. And it cut a two inch hole right through him. 
and it it really helped me get this buck so i'm super grateful for rage and deep six and matthews for making such a fast bow i'm shooting their their uh, matthews chill r just a fantastic bow you can see right here it whipped it in there so i man i'm just stoked so i just want to give a big thanks you know to my wife sarah and one of my best friends jimmy he's over here with us he's actually helped us help me get this hunting spot too in this farm and uh, I just can't be more grateful for the man upstairs too, giving me such a blessing of a deer. Oh, there he is, guys. You know what's amazing about this deer is the story goes way beyond just the magnificent trophy you hang on the wall or an incredible memories that you cherish with great friends and family. My wife and I decided to donate 100% of this deer's meat to two different charities that turned it into meals like Sloppy Joe's, Spaghetti, Lasagna, and Meatloaf. This deer had such a massive body, it ended up feeding over 750 less fortunate people that were starving. You know, one of my wife and I's goals are to give back just as many blessings that are given to us. And we always like to give glory to God for making this all possible. And we appreciate you watching our stuff and, and giving us your support. And we want to wish you all the luck in the woods, and we pray that God will guide your arrow just like he has ours.